Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Arkham Horror 3rd Edition here on the channel. Uh, today uh, I am doing the Veil of Twilight. Spooky! Um, the story so far. In the cold void between worlds, something lurks. Beyond the veil, it whispers, reaching out for those with the power to free it from its prison. Those who fall into its thrall gain great power, but at a terrible price, and each day its freedom draws nearer. Ma's boarding house is our starting space, and we place one doom in each space with a scar. That's a scar. Alright. Let's read our codex, or whatever this thing is called. People walk with their heads down, shoulders hunched. With each new oddity, it becomes harder to pretend that nothing is wrong. But the vanishings, the strange lights, the sightings of inhuman creatures... They are not something that can be ignored, at least not for long. When a space has three doom or a neighborhood has a total of five doom, place an anomaly in that neighborhood. If additional doom would be placed in a neighborhood with an anomaly, place that doom on the scenario sheet instead. If you would resolve an encounter in a neighborhood with an anomaly, you resolve an anomaly encounter instead. When a neighborhood has zero doom, remove the anomaly from that neighborhood. Threshold. You have heard numerous rumors about people and animals acting strangely in Arkham. Each new description is eerily similar to the last. Not an hour has passed since you were attacked by a flock of crazed pigeons and forced to take cover in Ma's boarding house. Now that the flock has moved on, it's time to take to the streets and figure out what's really happening in Arkham. When there is a total of two or more tokens on the scenario sheet, clues and or doom flip this card. Lasting Scars the veil between the world grows thin. Something stirs beyond them. A presence that reopens again and again. Sorry, where it touches the world, it leaves a scar. A wound that reopens again and again. Left unchecked, these scars will tear the worlds apart. White markers are scars in the veil. After an anomaly appears, if there is not a scar in that neighborhood, place one scar in that neighborhood with the most doom in that neighborhood. We are playing Diana Stanley and Michael McGlynn. Diana Stanley has the ability Forbidden Practices. When you would suffer horror, you may place up to two doom in your space to prevent an equal number of that horror. We have dark insight. Once per round while resolving a test, you may add one to the result of a number of dice equal to the space, equal to the amount of doom in your space. You may add one to the result of a number of dice equal to the amount of doom in your space. Okay. Then we got stolen amulet. Once per round during your turn, you may suffer one direct horror to perform one additional action. With her is Michael McGlynn. Out for revenge. After you defeat a monster as part of an attack action, you recover one sanity or focus one skill of your choice. O'Banion member. After you perform a gather resources action, you may test strength if you pass gain two dollars. And then we got the Chicago typewriter, which is just a you get plus four strength as part of an attack action. Sweet. Enemies we have, we got the Hulking Thrall, spawn at street nearest play, move toward and engage the highest observation, which is going to be Di uh, Diana Stanley. And then we got ourselves over here, Void Touched, spawn at street nearest leader, lurker, each investigator suffers one horror. Okay, so Mike, you're going to go probably want to kill her, or else you're just going to freaking die. This should be a clue. Hmm. Okay. Diana could also feasibly kill her. We need two successes, though. That is a lot of successes. That is a lot of successes for little old Diana. But yeah, we're going to Michael McGlynn. He's going to go one. No, what we could actually do... She deals two horror. Oh my god, that's awful for Michael. One, two, three, four. We're going to spend two money to move two additional spaces. Then we're going to try to kill this lady. We get eight dice. We need two successes. That's not a good start. That is awful. I'll do a good start here, for sure. We'll kill her next turn. 
Okay, for Diana, I have a plan. We're going to start by warding our space. We'll remove a Doom. We're then going to move, and we're going to spend $2 again. I know our money's gone now, but one, two, three, four. I do think not having Michael McGlenn take a bunch of damage seems like a good thing. Once per round during my turn, we're going to suffer a direct horror, and I'm going to prevent that horde and place a Doom on my space instead. So for my bonus action, we're going to attack and kill, try to kill this Void Touched. We have three. three. We need one success. She is dead. After you defeat this monster as part of an attack action, I gain a spell. And that spell is Miss Cerulea. You may test book in place of I as part of an evade action. We also gain a remnant. Not awful. Not an awful start. Which would you like better as a Christmas present? A competitive Arkham Horror card game or an RPG Arkham Horror rule system? I think we already have the Arkham Horror rules system, so I'd probably take the competitive card game. The old LCG I played, it was pretty fun. Uh, so it'd be cool to see that back again. I actually would love to get my hands on that LCG. Now we have a spell to burn remnants on, it's true. Alright, enemy phase. One, two. I'm coming for you. Okay. Uptown, Diana Stanley. That's enough browsing. Startled, you jerk up to see Miriam Beecher, the proprietor, at your shoulder. If you're not buying, then get out. Reveal the top three spells of the deck. You may buy one of them for half price, round it up. Well, they're all too expensive. <laughs> they are all much too expensive. A sleek black cat rubs against your leg. The black cat joins you. Are you kidding me? Or do you think they're going to be as strong as they are in uh, Arkham Horror? Wouldn't that be something? While casting a spell, if this ally suffers one or more horror, you add one success to your result. That's no normal feline, says Marion Beecher. Either test book to show her you're no normal human or spend two bucks to pay for her advice. All right, well, Michael McGlenn's going to try. He's going to be like, I have the power of magic! And it worked. Miriam and the cat should teach you a charm. Gain one spell. Clairvoyance. At the start of your turn, you may test book. Look at the top card of number of neighborhood decks equal to your test result. Of those, you may discard one non-event card. You know, Michael McGlenn might be a science, might be a, a, a magic man. <clears throat> Mythos phase. Let's go. Diana's first is a reckoning. Place one doom in each space with a scar. Second one is blank. Michael McGlenn's first is a doom at Ma's boarding house. Michael McGlenn's second one is blank. Okay. To the rule book. Oh, this is an alphabetical order. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to trade and give Diana the spells because she is much more likely to cast them. Much more likely to cast them. We do not want to be there where this, when this hulking thrall goes. When it attacks, if you don't spend a remnant, you become cursed.
Michael McGlynn, you could probably kill this thing, right? Who needs money when you can just use it to move everywhere? Oh, no, no, no. You don't want to move because we've spent, that was our, we spent too many actions. All right, so then you're just going to actually do a gather this turn. So we're going to gather, we're going to test strength. We get two more bucks. I love being an O'Banion gang member. It just feels good. All right. Dan, at the beginning of your turn, you may test book. We're going to spend our remnant to pay for the sanity cost. Army dude, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the goddamn table. It's a pleasure to have you. We succeed? If you see, look at the number of narrow cards up to your test result of those. You may discard one non-event. So this is going to be an event, so it's just going to stay here. But, you know, we might as well do that every turn. Alrighty, Roo. So this is wild. We're going to gather. We're going to focus a book. We're going to take a direct horror, but place a doom down to take an extra action. And we're going to use that to ward. Mono Mono, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the goddamn table. I'm going to use my Dark Insight to turn this 4 into a 5, and then we'll remove 2 Doom and gain a Remnant. Yo, Diana Strong. Move here. Ye old Magic Stop, starting with Diana. The buildings on either side of the shop keep flicking, flickering and changing. You gain one clue from your neighborhood. Miriam Beecher is behind the counters if nothing is wrong. Reveal the top three cards in the spell deck. You may buy any number of them and put the rest on the bottom of the deck. They are all too expensive. They are all much too pricey. However, it's now... Yield Magic Shop! Miriam Beecher agrees to teach you meditation exercises. Focus your book! <laughs> Michael McGlynn's like, you gotta get me out of here. Um, you, uh, that was just a taste, she says. I charge for advanced classes. Real top three cards of spells in your deck. Uh, in the spell deck, you may buy one of them. I have four bucks. If there's a good spell, I'll probably buy it. Okay. We got Astral Projection. Test book. If you pass, resolve an additional action as though you were in any other space. Monsters in that space don't engage you and you cannot move as part of that action. That's a strong spell. At the start of your turn, you may test book. If you pass, attach this card to a monster in any space. After you defeat this monster, gain the attached spell and research one clue. That's really cool. And then Flesh Ward, once per round, if you or another investigator or an ally on any space would suffer damage, you may test book, prevent damage. Ooh! I think we're going to grab that Astral Projection. That seems really strong, and we want to give that to Diana. Talking about spells, how do you feel about spells in Elder Horror? My friends and I started playing it recently, and we feel as if the spells aren't the best thing to prioritize. There are a lot of really good spells in um, Eldritch Horror. Uh, some that just absolutely break the game. Like Plumb the Void. If you get a Plumb the Void, you've pretty much won Eldritch Horror. Um, the, the nice thing about Eldritch Horror is that um, you can pretty much be pretty focused on what you want to do depending on what your character's stats are. So if you have high book, you probably want to get a kill spell because you're probably going to be in charge of closing gates. And there's usually a monster on the gate, so even just having one kill spell will usually do a lot of work for you. Anyways, let's see what our little token bag has for us today. Gate burst in Rivertown. Sorry, if a neighborhood has... Total of five doom. Okay. Not a scar in the neighborhood. We're good. All right, Diana's second one is a headline. 
Mystic Malfeasance, Occultism Craze, Sweeps Arkham, Police Warn, Most Mediums, Frauds, Beecher Boast Magic, Very Real by Rex Murphy. Test Brain Minus One. If you fail, place one Doom in your space. All right, we're testing one. We will place a Doom in our space. That's life. All right, Michael McGlenn, number one, is a monster. Spawn at street nearest prey. That's kind of rough for Michael. Second one is a doom. That doom is on Hangman's Hill. Alright, we really want to get a kill spell with Diana, I think. If we can get a kill spell, that would be really nice. These thralls are kind of cornering us here. I actually haven't read a lot of Lovecraft. I read a lot of other strange, of uh, other weird horror writers. I've only read um, Dagon by Lovecraft, and I like it. But I've read... My personal favorite weird horror writer is Thomas Ligotti. He has some really good stuff. Huh. Okay. Hmm. John Langan is very good. John Langan is very good. I like a lot of their short stories. Do they have the one? It's one of my favorites. I absolutely love it. Let me look it up. John Langan. Yeah, The Fisherman's a good book. I haven't finished that one. I started it, but I haven't finished it yet. The name, the short story has a weird name. If it is who I'm thinking of. Yeah, Technicolor. John Langan's Technicolor. It's one of my favorite short stories. I love that one. Technicolor is a great short story. <clears throat> no, I have not been able to check out Witch Creek Road yet. Mike's going to move here. No, Mike's going to move here. And let's give it a shot. We got eight to two. Yeah, they're dead. We gain a remnant. Well, that's good because then we can stop this curse from afflicting us. Oh no, you're going to go after Diana. So if Diana moves... Hmm. We could definitely do some stuff here. We're going to move here.
three doom. Okay, so we gotta get working on this. We're gonna ward for our second action. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. So we got five dice. <clears throat> do you also like modern horror novels, Justin? Yes, I do. Um, I mean, I consider modern to be pretty modern. Um, I, I, most, I mostly read short stories. Um, if you have not read Thomas Ligotti's, I highly recommend reading Thomas Ligotti. Some of his stuff is absolutely incredible. His uh, Dead Scribe, I think it's called, or like the Grim, like something with the Dreamer. I don't know the, the title off the top of my head, but give me those. Give me this remnant. Yeah, but to me, Thomas Ligotti is someone else. Is something else. He's incredible. Dream Scribe, yeah. I really like his stuff. Okay, we have an action left. I'm gonna... Well, we don't have an action left, but we're gonna put a Doom down. To take an additional action, which we're gonna use to... To research. Nice. Put a clue on this. That's called progress, baby. So she's going to move towards and engage the highest eye, which is going to be Diana. And this monster attacks you. Uh, we become cursed unless we spend a remnant. Which we can, luckily. And honestly... Sweet. I think either John Langan or Laird Barron wrote a short story that's sort of about Thomas Ligotti. I, I think that that sounds right as well. Thomas Ligotti, his, there, there's a, there a lot of themes of Thomas Ligotti's stuff has to do... You can see a lot of people they write about, like, especially when they start writing about dreams and mannequins. And, like, the idea of, like, dreaming through the eyes. And, like, li Thomas Ligotti has a very specific kind of, like, feel to a lot of his stuff. And a lot of writers, they, they, they kind of do stuff. Another one is also um, Robert Altman, who is also another very good uh, weird fiction writer. It's less weird horror. It's more just kind of like strange and kind of like more spooky. But um, I think it's Robert Altman. No, Aikman. Robert Aikman. Aikman. Yeah, Aikman. There's, uh, his stuff is also really good. Altman's the director, <laughs> the film director. My two entrants uh, were merging together. All right, uh, you get an encounter in Uptown, though, on Hangman's Hill. You wait until the Sheldon gang thugs leave before sneaking into pry open a crate. We make a strength check. That's a six. Let's go. Stephen Graham Jones. I actually don't, haven't heard of that one. Uh, of him. I'll have to check him out. Um, if you pass, it seems the rum runners are smuggling more than just rum. You gain one common item. Okay, so common items, we got a lucky cigarette case, which is really good. And we're taking that. The lucky cigarette case allows you to add one to the result of one die while resolving a test. All right, we got to go start cleaning some messes up, especially over there. Yeah, evil token for Diana is going to be a clue in the north side. <clears throat> Diana number two is a doom on Ma's boarding house. We have another thing. We're just going to place a scar down. <clears throat> Michael McGlenn number one is blank. Michael McGlenn number two is a clue. South side. Just remember, we have a giveaway currently going. We have nine entrants. If you would like a chance to win some sleeves for Arkham Horror the Card Game or Arkham Horror 3rd Edition, 
make sure to enter that giveaway. I'll be pulling it once this game is done. Okay. Well, Michael, why don't you grab this hulking thrall? Then we're going to attack it at 8. Uh, at 6, we roll two more. We're going to do a reroll with this. We're looking for a 4 or higher. Sick, it's dead. Gain another remnant. And then I think we're going to move for our second action. We're going to move to the science building. All right, as for you, Diana. We're going to place a Doom down to take an additional action, and that action is going to be a ward. Sweet, we'll get a remnant. Diana is strong. Oh my god. Move two. Um, and then we're going to gather some resources. We could focus. Yeah, we're going to focus. We're actually going to focus an observation, I think. I think that's most important here. All right, Diana has this science building. It would require a lengthy explanation, but the scientist can show you the weakening reality has been, dimin has been diminishing you and how to undo those effects. You may become delayed to gain one clue from your neighborhood and focus two skills of your choice, even if this exceeds your focus limit. Seems great. <laughs> Seems great. So we'll grab the clue. Um, and we'll focus two skills of our choice, which is going to be handshake and fist, I suppose. Leave Diana's brain at one, because that's where it should be. Yeah, exactly. She's just very strong. Science building. Dr. Graves is happy to pay you for your answers to your questions. You gain two dollar dues. I'm rich! As the professor explains the more exotic aspects of his work, you attempt to stay calm. Brain check. We pass. Um, if you pass, he agrees to work with you. Ezra Graves joins you. That seems kind of sick. Action. You may spend two remnants and suffer one direct horror to gain one ally. Well, that seems really good in Miss Diana Stanley. I'll tell you that much right now. I mean, and Michael McGlenn has everything he needs. He has his big gun. All right, so we're going to draw a headline and then two monsters here. Diana number one is a monster. Spawns street nearest leader. And a monster. Altered servant. Spawn at the unstable space, which is the observatory. Uh, and then we have a headline for Michael McGlenn, and that headline reads, Lunar eclipse looms! Moon and Earth's shadow, so-called blood moon, turns red tonight! Scientist insists nothing to fear from the wholly unnatural phenomenon. Local occultists close up shop until the eclipse is over by Rex Murphy, staff writer, Arkham, Mass. You become tainted unless you discard one spell. I'm tainted, baby. I'm tainted, baby. <laughs> Alright. Michael McGlenn's second is a full token cup. Yeah, it's kind of wild, isn't it, Synthetic? It's just... It's just... Gain a Remnant for free. Especially if you have not used her Dark Insight ability yet. Michael Mulgan's second token is a Gate Burst. That's spooky. North side. Okay. All right. If there's no unstable space, it becomes the 
Ma's boarding house. Starting space one, two, three, four. I actually think Ezra's probably even good with Michael McGlynn. Michael is actually going to spend two remnants. He's going to take one direct horror, and we're going to gain an ally. And that ally is Turan Garabagi. After you research one or more clues, you may remove one Doom from your space. All right, that's probably better on Diana. Then we're going to move here. Diana stands up for her first action. She is going to move two. And then we're going to ward for... We're going to... No... I think we just have to do that. I think we just unfortunately have to do that. Okay, let's do some of these. Two. Spiders, insects, and worms begin crawling out of your clothes, covering the entire neighborhood. If you pass, you wait calmly until they burrow down to the ground. You remove one doom from your space. Oh, sorry, I have to, I have to do a brain test. I'll use my dark insight to turn that into a five. If you pass, you wait calmly until they all burrow down to the ground. You remove one doom from your space. Sick. Michael McGlynn. Independent of control of your control, one of your hands begins writing and drawing abominable things. You suffer two horror. Oh, that's a bit spooky, but luckily we have allies that can soak it. When you regain control, you burn the worst of the results and catalog the rest. You can remove two doom from your space to gain and gain one remnant. Yeah, basically just, yeah, exactly that. My spells are now, don't even need to worry about anything else. Oh no, sorry, you just stay here. Each investigator suffers a horror. Okay, Michael McGlenn, you're probably gonna go kill her this turn. Recognize. Additional doom will be placed in a neighborhood with anomaly. Place that doom on the scenario sheet instead. All right, so two doom is going to go on this, and then we flip this thing. <clears throat> with every moonrise, the veil grows weaker. Reality bleeds the threshold. People and places falling through the cracks and the void between worlds. And beyond the veil, the voice of the lurker at the threshold grows ever stronger. Sorry about that. The Silver Toil Lodger is interested in these scars in reality as you. They meet in secret, burning incense and chanting in dead tongues. But are they allies or servants of the Lurker? A letter comes from Carl Sanford proposing an alliance. You discover a means of mending the scars in the veil. Flip card 21 before continuing. The dares in reality are not natural. Nor is the remedy. Magic is the answer. Arcane rituals unique. Um, to the particulars of the scar, with alliance and hard work, uh, you can repair your wounded reality and perhaps keep the lurker at the threshold at bay. White markers are scars in the veil. After an anomaly appears, if there is not a scar or a mended scar in that neighborhood, place one scar in that space with the most doom in the neighborhood. You may spend two clues as an action from the snare sheet to mend a scar. A mended scar does not cause doom during reckoning. An investigator may gain a dark pack to join the Twilight Lodge. If you do, add cards 24 and 25. Yeah, man. Michael McGlynn. I have a feeling he's not long for this world, so he can do this. So we add cards 24 and 25 to the Codex. Then we return this card to the Archive. Okay. Twilight gathers. The Silver Twilight Lodge is pleased that you have agreed to work alongside them. They explain that a powerful being known as the Lurker of the Threshold dwells just beyond the Veil and offers great power to those wise enough to listen. But we must take care not to allow the Lurker into our world, explains Carl Sanford. No, 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 no. We can do some of his power, but not all of his power. If we do all of his power, then we're in trouble. Um, 
In particular, we must repair the scars. When a scar is mended for the first time, flip this card and read the Gathering Power effect. When there are six or more Doom on the scenario, flip this card and read the Silver Key effect. Plumb the Void. As a member of the Silver Twilight Lodge, you have access to their vast knowledge of the occult. They, uh, they have studied the strange tears in reality and have created a means of traveling vast distances by stepping from one plane of existence to another. It is not without its risk, admits Carl Sanford, but little that's worth doing is. If you're in a neighbor with, neighborhood with an anomaly, you may step into the void. Book minus one. If you pass, you traverse the universe. You move to any space in a neighborhood with an anomaly. If you fail, become lost in time and space. You move to the unstable space and suffer one horror. Cool. I believe that was Diana Stanley's first card. Next one's a blank. Michael McGlenn's first is a blank. And his second is a monster. Spawn of the street nearest prey. <clears throat> okay. We need this thing dead. So I think Michael McGlenn's going to move in here. And we're going to try to kill this thing. He has four health. That is a lot of health. We get eight dice. I'll kill him with a lucky cigarette. Actually, no, we'll see. We have two more dice. We can see if we roll. Yeah, I'll use the lucky cigarette case to kill him. We gain a remnant. And we also get a heal of horror. Remove one sanity. Boom. If FFG would release a new advanced investigator pack system, what kind of archetype would you like to see? Oh. That's a good question. I'd love to see a mystic that's built around trauma on their investigator. I would love to see a survivor that is all about um, scavenging through their discard pile, but specifically just for tools. I would love to see a guardian who is like super tank. I'd love to see a seeker that sucks, and I'd like to see a rogue that boosts up skills and rogues. <clears throat> All right. All right, so we're going to try to research for our first action with Diana. Sweet. Um, second action, we're going to mend this, mend this scar. They did create a secret that sucks. Controversial opinion, Harvey. Man, I, you know, I get it. I, think, I definitely think he's one of the weaker seekers, but having five book makes it so that he's fine. He's going to be A-OK. -okay. Um, when a scar is mended for the first time, flip and read the gathering power effect. With the help of the Silver Twilight Lodge, you're able to mend the scars by siphoning off the excess of mystical energy. It's only later that they realize the Lodge is storing the power for their own use. Ultimate power is within our grasp, says Carl Sanford. Think of all the good we could do. We need to only reach out and take it. So we must choose either stay loyal members or betray Carl Sanford. I think last time we betrayed him. Let's have some fun. Diana Stanley, she ain't redeemed. She's a cultist.
Carl Sanford holds the chalice aloft and chants in a dead language. As his attendants ring silver bells, he drinks. Yes, he sighs, and his eyes flare with golden light. The power grows within me. Soon, my friends, soon all of our dreams will be within my reach. All right. Okay, sure, sir. After this card is added to the codex, place two scars each in a neighborhood that does not contain any scar or amended scar. They may be placed in any space in that neighborhood. Can we go here and here? When three or more cards have been mended, we flip card 25. When there is nine or more doom on the scenario, flip this card and read the like unto a god effect. Uh-oh! That's not good, probably. Alright, so we all take a horror. This guy moves here. And then we get some encounters. Diana gets one of these. The radio plays a sickly hypnotic melody. Brain check. If you fail, you're not alone in here. You suffer three damage. Ouch. Oh, sorry. If you fail, you wake up covered in wounds. You can't explain. You suffer one damage and one horror. Big diff there. Big diff between those two. And Michael McGlenn's in a tree. Scenic. A tremendous old apple tree leans over the gravel road. Its, limp heavy with its limbs heavy with round red fruit. You help yourself, particularly to a fine-looking apple. You, you are an ally recovers two health. We don't need that. Thanks, though, game. I do appreciate it, but we, we're not here for that. She. Headline for Diana Stanley. And that headline is, Foul footprints found. MU zoologist stumped. Authorities not concerned. Probably a hoax, says Sheriff. By Rex Murphy, staff writer, Arkham, Mass. Test brain and resolve the effects based on your test result. Spawn one monster at the unstable space. That's a spooky monster. Next token is... Headline! Cattle cowed by coyotes! Cattle in Dumnich, Arkham, Mascatana country. Mutilated! Police blame coyotes. Local farmers insist human beings are responsible. Folks just losing control of a night crazed of beasts. Test brain. One success. Become tainted. Then you may focus up to two skills of your choice. I mean, they just call her completely focused, um, Diana Stanley. What if Dexter Kane was a bad seeker but could do Dexter's ability with allies? I'd be a bit disappointed. I kind of hope that, uh, Charlie Kane is his own, is his own guy. Doom. At the observatory. And blink. We gotta kill him and we just gotta not put there. Charlie Kane's ability is just going to be Charisma printed on his card. I hope not. I just hope they do something completely different with the character. Diana's going to move up here. We're going to attempt to ward. Oh, we drew a blank, didn't we? With, with uh, Michael McGlynn. All right, she's going to try to ward. We have five. I'm going to turn that. Get a remnant. Uh, 
Do we place a Doom down for a bonus action? I don't think so, because we would just gather. Yeah. Michael McGuinn's going to move in here. And he's going to shoot. We have 8 to 2. She's dead. Gain a remnant. Heal the horror as well. All right, move towards and engage the lowest brain. So that's going to be Diana. One, two. And this guy moves to the unstable space, which is the observatory, which is one, two, three, four. The observatory? Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be the faster way. Okay. Diana, north side. Train station. The train arrives and a crash of green lightning is clearly from another world. What the frick? You gain one clue from your neighborhood. Oh, that's good. The train seems abandoned and you steal yourself to board. Brain check. We have two. We fail. Another just, uh, scenic. You find a crate of fireworks abandoned along the side of the road. If you can find something in this damn box that hasn't been ruined by recent rain, it could be, prove a useful distraction. You may become delayed to exhaust one monster in any space. That's okay. Thank you, though, game. I appreciate it. All right. We have a monster. Spawn at street nearest leader. Lurker. Each investigator suffers one damage. Diana second is a clue, which is in Rivertown. Michael McGuinn, don't be shy. Show yourself to the camera. Michael McGuinn, number one, is a clue in the Miskatonic University. And his second one is Doom. That's a bit spooky. That's a little bit spooky. Ma's boarding house. Boom. Okay. Spend a buck to move an additional one. Let's grab some enemies. Let's open fire. Oh, I think I had to put a... Keep forgetting about this tainted. Alright. We're going to attack the altered servant. They do the same. This guy has more, so... Roll three more. Two more. Ooh, okay. That's rather unfortunate. We have a four, though. I'll turn it into a success. Give me a remnant. We love remnants. Oh, well, the start of our turn, we're going to test our clairvoyance. Which will allow us to look equal to the number of successes we get, which happens to be one. So we can look at the top card, and then we can choose to discard it. Yeah, 
because we're looking for our clue in there. And then... Move up here. I'm going to put a Doom down with my ability to get an extra action, then we're going to ward. Yeah, I'll use my ability to turn these and then get rid of them. All right. We each suffer one damage. We take a damage and a horror. We get to read an Arkham Advertiser. My travel reporter sent this from someplace called the Plateau of Lang, Rumble's editor Doyle Jeffries. I can't print this. I've never heard of it. You gain one clue from your neighborhood. Incredible. Doyle Jeffries, you idiot. Um, and then we're going to spend a remnant to gain three bucks. Okay. Ugh, this is stressful. We got a doom. Which spawns on the train station. That's totally okay. Diana's second token is oh, freaking gapers, man. Are you kidding me? On the north side. Oh, well, that went to the other side of the room. <laughs> Michael Malenz first. Headline. Planetary Convergence 9. Mars, Venus, outer planets aligned with Earth. Rare event occurs only every 500 years. Observers invited to Boston Observatory by A. Wong. Draw and resolve two additional tokens from the Mythos Cup. Fuck you! Reckoning. Place a doom in each space with a scar. Nine and we're doom on the scenario sheet. We have a bunch of this stuff too that we need to resolve. Flip this card. Your vision blurs. Test brain. One success. Choose not investigate any space. They suffer one damage and one horror. Sorry, Turan, you're dead. Discard this card. No, I don't want to buy viewers. Poor Medi Peppy. Poor Medi Peppy. All right, well, we're going to start with the Dark Pact. Roll the die on a one, bad things happen. Roll that again because it was cocked. Five, we're good. Flip this card. Your memory begins to fade. Test brain. One success. Discard all your focus tokens. Discard this card. So simple. All right, number two from the headline is a Doom on the Curiosity Shop. That's two Doom on this. Number two for Mark, sorry, for Michael, is that. Okay, this is bad. I'm going to try to shoot this guy. He's dead. We'll heal the horror. This one's definitely going worse than the other one. Let me move there. Okay, Diana. Oh, it's any neighborhood deck. I should be doing this every turn, so let's do it. 
We should be doing that every turn. You know what, I'm even gonna put a horror on the cat, so I automatically get one success. Three successes. Sorry, four successes. So let's look at this. I wanna discard that one. Let's look at this one. I wanna discard that one. Let's look at this one. I wanna discard that one. And then let's look at this one just for fun, and I'll discard that one. Okay. Try to ward? Sweet. See ya. Gain a remnant. Okay, we just take a damage. Sorry, Black Hat. Time to go. Oh, no, sorry. You can stay, Black Hat. Let me go to encounters. Everything seems normal here. Book. We have five. Five book. We succeed. We can remove a doom from a, look, not a space in our neighborhood. Michael McGlenn, you have two. We haven't used our lucky uh, cigarette case yet. The archway before you leads to an alien world. Your feet are dragging toward you toward it. Brain minus one, so we roll two dice if we pass. <laughs> Suffer one damage and one horror. Mike, I'm not going to say that would have been super helpful if you passed that, but that would have been super helpful if you freaking passed that, brother. All right, you have a card. Evil token. Headline. North side. Vigilant apprehended. A local factory worker unmasked. Three deaths now linked to the same man. I did what I had to do. You choose one. Fuck. I guess I'm becoming cursed. Next one is... Blank. Michael McGlenn's number one is... Blank. Michael McGlenn's number two is Monster. Spawn at most doom, huh? Sorry, that's here. Okay. So here's what I'm thinking. We move here. We attempt to ward. Uh, sorry, first we actually use our ability, our uh, clairvoyance. Oh, no, sorry, I want to look at this one. I looked at this one, so let's not be a butt. We also get rid of our curse, actually. That's sick. Poggy. All right, then we move here, then we ward. I'm going to use my Dark Insight to remove two of these. Yes, that seems good. I'm then going to put a Doom down with my ability to take an extra action, and that's going to be a research action. No, Anna, you suck. You suck, Diana! You suck! Would you rather play this or Elder Sign? Honestly, that's a tough question to answer because it would be entirely on what my mood is at the time. Because they're both very different tiles. Like, Elder Sign I can get done in 40 minutes. An hour including setup. This one is long. It's a bit more of a story game. We're taking it 8 to 2. He's dead. We gain an ally. We freeze someone trapped in the ice. We also gain this remnant that does, like, nothing. But we gain an ally, and that's none other than Arthur Johnson. Once per round, you may reroll and die while resolving a test. Holy crap, Arthur. You are strong. Anyways, this guy moves to... He goes here. Okay. 
curiosity shop. You find your path blocked by several large crates. Just got back from an estate sale, calls the owner Oliver Thomas. Go ahead and look through the boxes. I'm not sure what's in there, but it's all available for purchase. You may buy any number of curio items from the display. We have four dollars. I think we're going to grab the secret page, which allows us to get plus two as part of a ward action. The streets. Bridge. Respectably elderly, respectable elderly Carl Sanford stands at the edge of the bridge with two burly men in bespoke suits. They seem to be watching something in the water until they turn away as if satisfied. As they pass you, Sanford slips you a few, few bills. You didn't see anything here. Gain two bucks. That guy's my boss. That guy's my boss. Summon a monster. Doom on the advertiser. It's kind of nice. Michael McGlenn gets some Doom on the observatory. <clears throat> That's a bit poopy. Michael McGlenn number two, spawn a clue. South side. We never say no to free money. Oh, I didn't heal Sandy when I killed that guy. All right, Mr. Michael McGlenn, we're going to shoot this guy. We have eight. We need two successes. I'm going to reroll a die with uh, Arthur Johnson. Uh, then I'll use Lucky Cigarette Case. Kill man. We gain a remnant. We'll heal a sanity. We get an ally. That ally is Leland Williams. After gain this card, gain one curio item. Secure. Things are cheaper. Good. I suppose that's good. Then we're going to move two and we're going to come here. Alright, we're going to test Diana's uh, clairvoyance, spending a remnant. Um. Okay. I'm going to move here. We're going to attempt to research. That's beautiful. Uh, I'm going to put a doom down. I'm actually, honestly, I'm just going to take a direct horror to spend two to flip this. Okay, uh, we take one and one. We have a million allies to soak for us now, so let's do that. Do I regret buying this astral projection that I never gave to Diana? Yes, but that's okay. Train station. The stranger is a newly arrived in town and pretty rattled by the stories told on the train about Arkham's past. Spooky. Handshake. Three. We pass. If you pass, you confirm that there's a true lot of truth in the rumor, but assure them you're working to preserve the future. Gain one ally. And that ally is Tetsuo Mori! After you defeat a monster as part of an attack action, you may research one clue. Let's go? Okay. What do we got here? Spawn a clue, you say. 
At the Miskatonic Museum, you say? Or the university, I mean, you say. All right, everything back in the bag. We're about to lose, I think. Or it's about to become a lot more difficult, I think. Diana's second is a headline. Something rotten in an Arkham. Mayor says sewer close for repairs. Smell from beneath the streets described as unearthly. Putrid beyond the knowledge of men. Manhole covers a jar. By Rex Murphy. Which elder god would you say would be the best, pre best president for Canada and the U.S.? Probably someone like Nerlathotep. Probably someone like Nerlathotep for sure. Add this card to the codex and discard all other rumor headlines. Spawn one monster. Any investigator may suffer one damage and one horror to cancel this effect. That's pretty minor, TBH. That doesn't concern me too much. Michael McGlenn, number one. Spawn a clue in Uptown. <clears throat> Number two is a doom. South side, that's rough. One more doom before Mr. Carl Sanford becomes angry, I think. Okay, but it's our turn. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, eh? Synthetic, the, my allies are going in the wrong spots. They're going in the wrong spots. Well, we're going to have Michael McGlenn go first, and we're going to unload. We just need one success. He's dead. Oh, boy, a remnant for me? Um, we're going to try to actually ward for our second action. We have two... I believe. I'm not going to use it here. I'm not. I'm not. Diana's going to go one, two, three. Spend a buck. And then she's going to try to ward. She has a bunch. She has seven. Uh, Diana? All right, I'll use my stupid ability because Diana can't roll to save her life, apparently. <laughs> okay, no enemies. Diana first. A strange mist permeates this area, making people feel ill. Brain check. Diana! Suffer one damage. Tetsuo, you're my new damage soak. I love you. Michael McGlenn, book minus one. We're rolling one die. We need a four or higher, please, here. I'm gonna, that was fucking fricked. I wish Remnants did something. I wish they did something for goons. They just do nothing. Suffered damage and a horror. Bye, Ezra Graves, you're dead. That's mildly frustrating, man. I just wish Remnants did something. Uh-oh, it's all the way down here. And my arm isn't long enough? Is it? Oh, frick me, man. I'm a hero. Okay. Bag. Monster. Spawn at most doom. Diana two. Spawn a clue. <clears throat> oh, frick, man. We are in a very bad spot. Michael number one is exactly what we feared. Three doom on this. Uh, 
That's Arkham though, right? Okay, I have to flip something. Oh, there should be another scar somewhere. It should be over here. That was a while ago. Sorry, I missed that. Sanford's voice booms, his eyes glowing gold. Behold, my power is like unto that of a god. Let there be light. He throws his hands up to the air where a double spiral of golden lights reaches down to him. The bubble-like lights settle upon Sanford's skin like fireflies that merge with him. Sanford's triumphant roar soon becomes a scream of anguish as he doubles over in pain. When he straightens, his eyes are milky white and his voice is like a thousand voices all calling Yog sothoth uh, Add... Return this card to the archive and we add 27 and 28. All right, 27. Oh, I'm sorry, where does this fucker spawn? Historical Society. Yeah, impossible. Reality is breaking down all around you. People vanish when they step across thresholds. Truck that leave town never return. Trucks that enter town are from alien worlds. The void between the worlds is very close now, and the lurker at the threshold whispers its secret name in your mind. Yog Sothoth. Members of the Silver Twilight have all, as far as you can tell, fallen under the lurker's spell. You're in this alone. Whenever you encounter, whenever your encounter text includes Carl Sanford, stop reading that encounter. Instead, the servitor of Yog Sothoth moves to your space, engages you, and deals damage and horror. After the servitor of Yog Sothoth has been defeated, flip this card and read the Arkham Scarred effect. When there are 13 or more Doom on this, we're going to lose the game. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh oh! That's a lot of Doom! I think we even have to draw one more tile with Michael McGlenn. All right, who's this effer? So he has two, three additional health for each scar that has not been mended. So he has nine, 11, 13 health. Honestly, I think we're just going to kind of copy paste our previous our previous life. Oh, I had a reroll with that guy. Spend a buck. All right, we're going to fight until we lose or you die. Those are the rules. All right, let's fight him. We have eight to two. Roll two here. All right, well, we can deal three. Okay. Diana's going to move here, and then she's going to attempt a ward. We have seven. Oh, I had a reroll still. That wouldn't have been enough with him. We have seven for this ward. In a remnant.
All right, enemy phase. It's both of us. Okay. Uh, we get attacked, which conveniently is not enough to kill Arthur Johnson. Convenient. All right, Diana does get a Ma's boarding house encounter. Ma tells you a lot of suspicious looking strangers have been around lately. She is happy to give you a discounted meal just so she feels safe and has someone to talk to. You may spend one buck to recover three health. We don't have the buck to spend, but we do gain a clue from our neighborhood. All right, let's go to the bag of death. Man, I wish the mythos phase was quicker. That's something every time with this game. We got a blank for Diana 1. Mom's boarding house. It's because the um, these tokens can sometimes be good. So you need it needs to be two. But I really wish it was just one per person. Strange lights on strange nights. Glowing lights spotted near river marsh. Moonlight reflected off clouds, says authorities. I call this name then glimpses of the spheres. No photographs. Oh, let's go. This is Michael McGlynn. He's testing book. Two successes. You suffer two horror and gain one spell. I really wish that wasn't the case. Binding. It's just another frickin' uh, evasion spell. I don't need that. Doom. Arkham Advertiser. All right, well, we're going to focus for our first action. And then we're going to attack. So we now get to roll nine dice. Great. Reroll. So we can deal with three damage again. <clears throat> I mean, this is somewhat of a pace. Yeah, no doubt. Oh, sorry, Diana's turn. We're going to do the special. Our clairvoyance. We fail. All right, this is going to get a bit weird. We're going to move in here. We are going to place a doom on our location to take an additional action. Uh, and we're going to attack this guy. So we're going to engage him. So we have four. Holy shit, Diana. Um, then for our last action, we're going to Miss Savrella. We're going to try to evade this guy. We succeed. Place a Doom in our space. You fool, you think that's a bad thing? This guy's going to come to Michael McGlenn. Michael McGlenn's going to get hurt a bit. Yeah, they have a they have a very competitive relationship going for sure. Okay, then historical society. Mr. Peabody is struggling to translate a historical text that is written with unusually exotic symbolism. You may spend one remnant to offer up some of your own findings to aid the translation. If you do, the curator is gave, grateful. You gain one curio item and one clue from your neighborhood. I mean, that is kind of sick. All 
I'm also going to get a curio item. Do any of these help? Yeah, it's probably just this Elder Sign amulet. Allows us to tank a bit. Okay. Alright, we need things to go really well here. We just need to not draw... Oh no, I think we're done. 369. No, we're not done, but it's not good. Reckoning. Let's see Michael McGlenn. He's fine. This one, we put a Doom on this location. This location. And then here. We're at 12. We have a blank. We have a monster. And then we have to hope we don't get Doom. If we get a Gate Burst, we're pretty much done. Yeah, if we get a Gate Burst, the game's over. If we get a Doom, there's a chance. If we get anything else, if we get Reckoning, the game's over. If we get a Blank or a Monster, everything's A-OK. -okay. We get a Monster. We got some Whippoorwills, though, which kind of suck. They reduce our numbers a bit. He has stood up. We just need to deal five damage to him this turn. So let's go. Michael McGlynn. Let's attack. We have nine to two. Sorry, nine to five health remaining. That's kind of sick. I think we've done it. We've done it and we didn't even need... to use our cigarette case. Um, flip this card and read the Arkham Scarred effect. Wherever the thing that used to be Carl Sanford goes, chaos and doom follow. And reality comes unstuck. So does with a heavy heart that you do what you must be done and strike Sanford down at last. How can this be? Sanford cries. I am invincible! But invincible or not, he burns away like so much paper as the power within him explodes. The crater he leaves behind can be mended, but the loss of Sanford in the lodge is a scar from which Arkham may never recover. The investigators win the game! <sighs> so sick? So sick. That was a good shot from Tommy there. Oh, sorry, I had to roll one less. Even if I didn't have that one extra die, uh, I had a four that I could have used my lucky cigarette case and a re-roll. So I guess this actually... No, no, it's fine. Yeah, everything was A-OK. -okay. We had that win no matter what. Man, we got, we got really lucky. We got lucky on that one for sure. I like Di uh, Diana with all five focus tokens. That was pretty fun. That was a good time. Diana is very strong. Uh, I did note that she did get weaker as the game went, though. If she was playing without um, anomalies, I think she would have been like S tier busted. But I think with anomalies, her power level did wane a bit. But luckily, anomalies aren't used in every scenario, so. There's a bunch where she just becomes, like, non-stop good. Because the thing is, with her ability, even if I'm in a location with zero doom, I can't put a doom down if there's an anomaly there because it goes on the sheet, right? However, in the previous one, which was just, like, pandemic burst rules, if there was zero there, I could put it down no problem, right? So there was, there was a little bit of balance in Diana. Remnants need something to do for goons. Even if it's like spend three to reroll the die, I don't care. It, there needs to be something for remnants to do for goons. I don't care if the exchange rate is incredibly negative for goons. There needs to be something. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching on YouTube. Have a good one. I hope you have a fantastic day. I love you. And as always, GG's.